you know, we want to thank you all for being here as we're getting ready to close out our True Love Weights program for another time and uh, be uh, seeing 12 teenagers make a commitment to, to God tonight. And, uh, <laughs> symbolize this commitment and everything here uh, at the end of the service. But uh, right now, if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to give them a little bit of a charge, but I also want to speak to all of us tonight. So if you've got your Bibles, you can go with me to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. And this might be the shortest message y'all heard me preach in a while. <laughs> it could be that some of y'all didn't even think I had it in Alright, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says this, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel, in sanctification and honor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we love you. We praise you. Lord, we thank you for this night. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. Lord, I thank you for young people, Lord, tonight, these 12 teenagers who have come and, Lord, here in a very few moments will make a commitment, Lord, to themselves, to you, Lord, to their future spouse, and, Lord, to their family tonight, that they will be pure. And God, that they'll walk pure. And Father, we just pray that you would just bless our time together, Lord, that you would speak to us from your word. And God, that you would not just speak to these twelve, but speak to all of us, God, tonight about what your will is concerning this. And Lord, that you would just have your way here tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, as we're, we're together for this special ceremony for these teenagers, uh, and as they are coming together to make this commitment before God and... and and this congregation is witnesses, uh, they're coming together to say tonight that they will lead from this point a life of sexual purity until they enter a biblical marriage relationship. So it's important to uh, examine, as we come to this time, it's important to examine the biblical mandate for this type of ceremony. You know, last Sunday night, for those who were able to be here, uh, Brother Terry was led in his sermon to bring us to the passage that I just read to you and to spend some time here on the fact that uh, this type of purity this is the will of God for the life of all believers. It's the will of God uh, not just tonight for these teenagers who are making the commitment, but friends, it's the will of God for the adult. It's the will of God for the married adult as well for us to remain sexually pure. And so we don't have to question tonight uh, why it is that God calls us to this purity because uh, in the in that passage that we read, because here's the thing, God's very nature is purity. That's first and foremost why tonight that God calls the believer to a life of purity. He's declared in His Word that He's holy, that He's pure. And as a matter of fact, in the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, we read these words, This then is the message which we have heard of Him and declare to you that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. So God calls the believer as it is out of darkness, the darkness of sin, and into His light. And so that's exactly who God is because God's light. God doesn't uh, have any sin. God has no need to repent. God does not fellowship with sin. And He calls people to His side and He calls them to a life of purity. And the commitment that they're about to make tonight to remain pure, they will be giving a witness to a lost and dying world that God is able to change people's lives and that God is able to help them do what they commit to do. See, here's the thing, the commitment that you all are about to make tonight, you 12 sitting here in the front, the, the, the commitment that you're about to make tonight, it is contrary to the attitude and the values of the world. <coughs> It is, it is in stark contrast to what the world says is permissible when it comes to these type of relationships. But you know, there's another reason that God has called the believer to purity. And that is because that is God's design. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4, the Bible says, 
Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. See, God has designed a marriage relationship. We see that from the very first creation of man. In, in Genesis, we see that He created man and then He created woman and He brought the two together to be helpers and help make for one another. And He's designed this relationship, the relationship that you're making a commitment to stay pure from, He has designed that to be for one man, one woman, one lifetime, and all inside of a biblical marriage relationship. See, it's out of obedience to the command of God and respect for the very nature of God that you come to this commitment tonight. See, but here's the thing. One thing we must always be aware of is if God has called us to something, then the devil is always trying to destroy what God has called us to. He'll do everything in His power to destroy your commitment that you make tonight. He'll do everything He can to blur the lines of what's acceptable. See, that's the very reason, friends, tonight that we see an attack on the definition of what constitutes marriage in this country. I'm not no hater or nothing tonight, but I will stand on the Word of God and say it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, okay? Hello, man. It's one man, one woman. And that's what God designed it, and that's how it's supposed to be. But you know what? It's also that the devil wants to attack uh, this covenant and this commitment because we see the rampant destruction of families because of the choice by either the husband or the wife or even sometimes both not to practice purity inside of their own marriage relationship. But you know what? As believers, we've been called out to be sanctified is what 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 told us that we're to be sanctified, to be set apart. To, we're not supposed to allow our lives to be redefined by the world, but rather we're to stand upon the firm foundation that is in Christ to declare that we are evidence that God has a plan for each person's life, even in these relationships, and God's plan is good, and God's plan is the best plan. Amen. You know what, tonight, think of this. Think of the guilt and sorrow and pain that could be avoided if people just practice God's plan concerning this relationship. But you know what? You 12 teenagers tonight, I'm so proud of you, but as you prepare to make this commitment, I think it's important for you to understand what you're doing tonight. I think that it's just like when two people are about to get married. I mean, I, I, I get real serious about this thing. You know, I, I mean, I can't help it if people wind up getting divorced after, but you know what? I do all I can to try to direct them on the front end. And tonight, I can do everything I can to direct you on the front end on how you should conduct yourself going forward on what you should do and to learn from, from, from the past of others and to, to learn from what people who are older than you and who have experienced life are trying to teach you concerning this. But you know what? It's important tonight that as you come to this commitment that you know exactly what you're doing. You know, I, I have no doubt. You've been through the class, or you, at the very late, at the very least, you've read the book, and I think you understand this commitment. You've already signed the commitment tonight. You're about to take the, the commitment before this congregation, before God, and, and I think you understand what it says. I think you've defined the, the relationship. I think you understand the pressures that you come that will try to get you to break this commitment. But tonight. You need to understand what that commitment says. It says that you're committing this. You're making this commitment to God, to yourself, to your family, to your future mate. And a commitment should never be taken lightly. Now, a lot of times, unfortunately, we live in a society where people make contracts with each other because they don't trust each other. And they, you know, want to avoid any liability and they don't want responsibility and things like that. But when you make a commitment or a covenant to God or to another person, it's based on complete trust and it's based on the heart and the intention of following through it. All the way. So see, the commitment should not be taken lightly. As a matter of fact, I believe that the commitment you're making tonight should be treated just as serious as the marriage covenant itself, which you will one day pledge yourself to when God leads you to your mate that He has prepared for you. And listen to me. God has prepared someone for you. Listen. You don't want to get the wrong one. Do you hear me? You want the right one. You want God's plan for your life. You want the mate that God has chosen for you. 
Because it's hard enough to live in a marriage relationship where you know you have God's mate. It will be doubly hard if you don't find God's mate for your life. And so you should always ask God, God, is this who you have me be with? See, God's a part of this commitment you're making tonight. And you need to understand the biblical implication of the fact that God is a party to this commitment you're making tonight. And the Bible says this in Ecclesiastes 5 5. It says, Better is it that thou shouldest not bow than that thou shouldest bow and not pay. I want to ask you something tonight. I think Melissa and, 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 and different ones have already reinforced this to you, but I want, I want to make sure tonight you understand. Only make this commitment before God and these witnesses. If you have it in your heart to keep it. If you are, if you tonight are going to make a hundred percent effort to make sure that you stay pure, then make this commitment. Friends, if there's anything in you tonight that says you're not going to do it, don't do it. Because God's a party to this commitment. And the Bible says it'd be better that you wouldn't vow it at all than to vow it not keep it. See, here's the thing. You think, well, man, Brother Jeff, that's a huge weight you're putting on us. No, here's what I want you to know. It pleases God greatly that you'd be willing to stand up tonight and make a public commitment to Him that you're going to be pure. But it will please God even more if you publicly walk this out before people. If you publicly live the life that God is calling you to. So before we begin the ring ceremony tonight, here's what we're going to do. Told you short. I'm the thing. You're like, wow, right? Before we get to the ring part, though, we're going to have a time of invitation and reflection. I'm not going to have any music playing. I'm going to have, it's going to be a time of just quiet invitation and reflection. And here's the thing. This invitation tonight is not just for those who are about to make this commitment. <laughs> this invitation right now is for everybody here tonight. And maybe it is that during this time of invitation, maybe it is, young people, uh, I'm reminded that there could be someone sitting here tonight about to make this commitment that, hey, you've already messed up. Well, guess what? I'm glad that I serve a God that has redeemed us. I serve a God that forgives us, that offers grace. And so tonight, what you're doing is you're saying to God from this point forward. So during this time of invitation, it might be that you want to come and just tell God, say, God, I've not, I've not been pure all the way up to this point, but God, right now, I, I'm asking you to forgive me of that, and I'm also asking you to help me from this point forward to live the life of purity that you've called me to. And I want strength, and I want help in doing that. But it could be that there's others out there tonight that you know you're not in God's will as it relates to sexual purity. It could be inside your own marriage. It could be... Uh, that you're a, a, a single person, it could be that you're a dating couple, whatever, but if you know you're not in God's will, then you have the opportunity during this time to freely respond as well and to ask God for His help to follow His plan for your life. You know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have Brother Adam come up here with me. We're going to be here to receive people. If you want to pray alone, that's fine. If you want to pray, if you want one of us to pray with you, we'll do that. You know, but every one of us, need to look in our hearts and ask God, God, what do you want me to do? Maybe it is tonight, even those of you who are sitting here, you say, well, you know what? I'm going to come up there and I'm going to pray for these young people. I'm going to just cover these young people in prayer tonight that they will do what they're supposed to do, that they will follow through with this commitment they're making now. So let's just bow our heads. Believing that true love waits. Believing that true love waits. I make a commitment to God. I make a commitment to God. To myself. To myself. To my family. To my family. And to my future mate. And to my future mate. To a lifetime of purity. To a lifetime of purity. Abstaining from. Abstaining from. Sexual activity. Sexual activity. Of any kind. From this, day, From this day until I enter, until I enter a, biblical a biblical marriage relationship, I will keep my body, keep my body and thoughts pure, and thoughts pure as, I trust, as I trust 
In God's perfect plan. In God's perfect plan. For my life. For my life. You can give them their ring.